How do you make a community TV program? Well, Jess McCall is one person who had a great idea and ran with it. And now she's made a series for our community stations, both here in South Australia and Victoria. And she joins me now. Hello, Jess. Hello, Malcolm. It's so lovely to be here. Well, Thank you. I'm really happy to have you on the program because it's always great to see somebody who has an idea and then goes with it. And it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're your age or my age, 32. <laughs> That's right. Well, you don't look a day over 30, Malcolm. Thank you very much. And when do you get the glasses fitted? The glasses? Yes. Well, Because if I... you think I'm that age, <laughs> you need glasses. I'm Jess. wearing contacts today. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. I know you actually do wear glasses. I do, you? yeah. But you look great. Oh, Whether thank you. Whether you've got them on or off, doesn't matter. Thank you. Now, so, Jess, you had a bit of experience uh, before, but you were sort of inspired by somebody from your area, which is Gawler, making a TV program and thought, why not? That's right. So a few years ago, I met someone else who's around my age in the same community yep. um, who has their own television show. And I thought, oh, that's something I've always wanted to do. And clearly, if someone else around my age can do it, then I can too. And, you know, do you know that is so important. That realisation is so important. I was just reading an article a while ago about a guy who's I think he's 32 and he's just bought his 100th house. Wow. At 32. Good for him. And th he said exactly the same thing. If you want to do something, just do it. Don't delay. Don't let the negative vibes come into your head. You've just got to do it. But you've been doing and making things since you're a little girl. I have. So when I was a lot younger, well, I've been drawing and painting and that type of thing since before I could walk, to be honest, probably. Um, but... You mean you stuck <laughs> your hands on the wall with paint on them? That's right. And your parents <laughs> just loved it. I'm sure something like that would have happened. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Knowing yeah. me, yeah. So I've always been into creative things and arts and, um, you know, drawing, painting, sculpture, whatever it was. Um, and I think that's... Um, inspired my show in two different ways so one making a show which in itself is something creative but two making a show about arts yep. um, and how it is beneficial to young people well it was beneficial to you because that's what started you on the road to and you've got some shots of some of the early things that you did I love these things Thank so you. let's have a look at some of them because I've also got bits and pieces that my mum kept when I was a kid and I value them greatly Yes, yeah, definitely. Let's have a look, shall we? Yes. All right. So, Very attractive. <laughs> that's actually an eyeball that I'm painting by hand for a sculpture of an animal. Um, right. You'll see the finished product soon when it comes up, but um, it was quite a, a big sculpture like that, and there were lots of them. I think they were they were they were all sheep actually. Right. Um, <laughs> they had little eyeballs that were all different colours. They okay. were very fun to Is make. Is that the next shot? Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's a shot of me making different clay animals and sculptures as well. You can't really see what I'm making, but it's probably one of those ones. <laughs> and can I see a handprint on the wall in that shot? You probably <laughs> did. <laughs> okay, so you were using all those bits and pieces and this is where it started to go to. Yeah, so that's where it started to go to. So that's um, that would be a, one of the sheep sculptures. It's made out of modelling clay and the legs had sticks in them so that they could actually stand up right as well. Like oh, right. Without me even doing anything, I would just put them there and they would stand up. Right. And it was it was very, very fun to make. And there and were lots of them. these are the end results. That's the end result. And you won a trophy. I actually won a trophy. That's right. So I entered it in, in the Gawler Show, which yep. is the community I live in. I entered a lot of artwork in the Gawler Show. That was just one of them. And it won a highest aggregate and a trophy as well, which was really what was exciting. What's the storyline here? It looks like there's a story happening. So these were real sheep, actually. Um, they were living in a paddock that was near my house and I used to feed them through the fence and they got really tame over the years, which was really cute. So they I ended up making... They thought their mother. I'm sure they did, yeah. They probably did. <laughs> they probably did. Um, yeah, now here so are some chooks. You painted these? I did. So they were the chooks that we had at our place as well. So we had lots what of animals. What a great memory. Yeah. Really value these things. Mm. You know, they end up in an attic or something, but... That's right. Um, Mother Hen and Chicks. Mother Hen and Chicks. This was another one for the show? That's was another it? one for the show. I think that was a different show. It might have been Tanunda. I can't remember. Okay, but you got the first prize. I did, yeah, yeah. 
and here's some of your... How old would you have been when you made this artwork? Oh, that's a really good question, Malcolm. I probably would have been about eight. And you loved she sheep and chooks. I loved all sorts of animals, but I found that um, the sheep were really fun to draw because of all the wool and, and that type of thing. So, okay. And once I got a... Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once I started drawing them, it was like, this is so much fun, so I drew them all the time. I love that, the rooster, I think, in the corner of the screen there a minute ago because that was really nice piece of work. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so because you had this string to your bow... Uh, you've gone through school, you've gone through high school, then you came to this university. That's right. So I actually started off doing a teaching degree for, you guessed it, art and drama, which both of which I love. Um, but as soon as I went on placement into the classroom, I thought there is no way I could do this. I have so much respect for people who are teachers. Both my parents are teachers, but there is no way I could do it. So I dropped out of that course and then... Do you think it's harder now to be a teacher than perhaps when your parents were? I definitely think it would be, um, why, yes. why do you think that is? Is it just the respect of teachers isn't the same? I think that's one thing, um, but just... You know, I've heard quite a lot of horror stories about teaching from various people over the years, and I think it, there's no way it could have always been like that. So, no, yeah. No, I think um, I think the problem when I was young, and that was a long time ago, and not as long as you, but I mean, you're not you're not as long as me, but um, I think we were taught to respect the people that taught us, and these days it seems it's more about a challenge to the people that teach us rather That's than. That's right. They have the information and I need to know it. Yes. There's a definite thought, which can actually be positive. Like in your case, you thought, I can do this. Mm. But knowing you, I know you've gone to people to help you make it happen. That's right, yeah. And that's what you need to do, which means you respect the people you've gone to. That's so right. So you've got it. That's right. And I've got to say as well that people here at this university have been absolutely amazing with their support for my show. So um, that's just one example well, of that. Well, let's talk about the show because we, <laughs> we need to actually explain what is the show about. So, as I was just saying... There's four you've done so far. That's right. So, there's four in season one. They both mm -hmm. go for 24 minutes each. So, yeah. basically, half an hour time slot on that the TV. That allows for a commercial That's break. right, yes. Um, and I've got four. One of them is about music and how to join a band or become a musician. Oh, one great. One of them is about dance and what like dance groups that you can join in the area and how to become a dancer. One is about murals, specifically how to get a mural painted at your school like and work collaboratively with other students. Oh, and then the idea. final one is about theatre, so how to join a theatre group and the benefits of taking up performing arts and they're all aimed at young people. Um, I go all around South Australia and visit different groups and interview different young artists who are, you know, really making their mark and really doing incredible things to inspire so other people. So you produce this, but yes. you also host it? I do everything except for the camera work okay. because I'm in it. And I've got some incredible camera operators who are also students here at UniSA as well. Um, yeah. and It's great to have that collaborative thing. But, you know, the people you're working with now, you'll probably keep working with for the next foreseeable future. And, and that's a really nice thing because you sort of form a family unit. It, well, you do sound and you can do the, the vision and you can do the editing and you can... Did you edit as well? Yes. You did the editing too, of course you did. <laughs> um, someone else Did you did. write the scripts as well? I ad lib most of the time, but for the rough points no, that I, I write... No, I don't know how anyone could possibly do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do, do you know, I think this is what's lost in a lot of pre-recorded TV, mm. it's so heavily scripted yes. that you miss the, the reality of a conversation. Yeah. And you need to get that instant reaction. That's right. And it makes it so genuine and authentic, doesn't it? Just yeah. like what we're, what we're doing now with our conversations. Yes. Oh, I'm reading it off the teleprompter. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, I see, I never work with notes because yeah. to me that's sort of cheating. If I don't know what I'm going to talk to you about and listen to what you say, then the people watching this are not going to be engaged. That's right. Because it is sort of, it, it is like a three-way conversation because I can talk to uh, people watching this through this camera here. So uh, if I turn to this camera, the director knows that I'm talking to the people at home. If I'm looking at you, we have a, a, a wide shot so we can see both of us. Yeah, and wow. then you'll probably get a shot from a camera over my shoulder in a tick to say, there you go. I to can say, see it there. There you are. 
And it's very important for the director to also follow the conversation and know what we're talking about. That's right. Did you, as you were interviewing and talking to the kids and the people you talked to, mm. did you sort of direct the camera person at the same time? Yes. So we'll set, set up the shot normally. This is how it works anyway. It's a bit different every time. So there'll be, if it's me and the person in the one shot, um, especially if I have a reporter mic, yep. we'll just have the camera operator set up here and filming yep. what's going on. Sometimes though we do a situation where it's the person being filmed or being interviewed just on their own yep. on the screen and then I'll be standing. Well, that's a close up as opposed to a two shot. That's or right. Or a shoulder shot. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then I'll be standing um, at a good eye line just sort of adjacent to the camera um, asking them the questions so then they can be looking at me but the camera's getting a good shot of their face as well. Yes. Uh, well a lot of um, and you're, are you doing a journalism course or what are you doing here? So I'm doing what's called a Bachelor of Creative Industries and right. that's in film television and journalism. So it's a bit so of everything. It's a bit of everything yeah. All right so we're going to come back in a tick and we're going to show you uh, it's a promo for the show isn't it? It that, is. That's going to air in the next few weeks. So join us after this quick break and we'll talk more with Jess. <music> Jess McCall is our special guest in this episode of Our Time and welcome back by the way. Jess, uh, your show is called BTS with Jess. I just saying that out loud, I just realised that it rhymes. But the BTS stands for behind the scenes, and as it should. Now we've got some photos that are behind the scenes. Perhaps you could just run us through exactly who they are, what they are, how they made the show. Definitely. So, well, that's me interviewing um, a couple of girls who were doing dance um, at a dance concert that we filmed. So we filmed the rehearsal um, of them preparing. So essentially the behind the scenes of their dance of concert. Course, yes. Exactly. And then we went and filmed the dance concert itself, which was at the Shadley Theatre in Elizabeth. Um, right. And that was... Your hair is curly there. It is. I do something different every day. Oh, okay. <laughs> And this one is part of the murals episode. So she looks like she's been painting she something. She sure has herself yes. to start with. <laughs> yeah. And the mural was spectacular as well. It filled up a whole wall at Woodville High School oh, last year. Yes, and it was painted by um, in collaboration with the students, local artist Lucinda Penn. This one is from the Onkaparinga Christmas pageant. Um, and I was catching up with an incredible theatre group called um, Expressway Arts. Um, they did a roving performance that they rehearsed. Um, what, during the actual... During the parade. Oh, yes, goodness. it was spectacular. That must have been really difficult because you're yeah. on the move. Yeah, it was, but they did such an incredible job and I filmed their um, rehearsal um, leading up to that too to get the whole scope of what was going on right. and all the preparation that went into it. Now we have um, Stacey, who I interviewed again at the same dance concert that I mentioned just earlier. Mm -hmm. um, that was just behind the scenes of their... Um, when they're all nervous and excited That's about right. going on. Yes, they were so nervous, but they absolutely did, a, did an amazing job. And this is a person called Ren, who is part of the Gawler Youth Band. Incredible guitarist. Um, we filmed Gawler Youth Band when they did an end of year concert at the Civic Centre in Gawler. That's right. where I live. Yep. Um, not in the Civic Centre, but in the town. Oh, why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why not? I might as well live there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and that was the Gawler Youth Band in the music episode and they're right. a fantastic local group. So each episode is about a specific thing. It uh, is. Or a specific art pursuit. Yes, yeah. So each um, episode is about a different topic. So as I said earlier, I've got theatre, dance, murals and music. So right. four well, together. Art. How did yeah. you find the subject material? That's a really good question. It's, it's different for each episode. So... Um, for the first one I did, I wanted to interview the Gawler Youth Band, who I just mentioned, yep. um, and I filmed them about, or by the time this airs, it'll be over well over a year ago. Right. Um, the first shoot that I did. Well, yes, that's the thing that people don't realise, actually, how long it takes to that's make a program right. like this. Yes. Because you're on the run with it as well. That's right. Yep. Yes, but that first shoot that I did did not work at all, so I completely scrapped it, and then oh, I okay. ended up doing another shoot for the Gawler Youth Band sometime later. Was that a good thing later. to have that first, oh, not happy with this, 
Let's definitely. do it again. Definitely. And to make that decision is difficult. Mm, that is right, yeah. Was it one of those things that so many people say, oh, I don't want to see myself on TV. I don't, oh, no, I don't want to look like that. It was a little bit of that because I think it's the first one that I did and I was still trying to learn all the ropes and figure out what I was doing. But also um, the footage quality was just not up to scratch uh, at all. So, yeah. yeah. I understand. Well, so we've got the promo for the show. We do. And the show will play here on Channel 44 in Adelaide and yep. 31 in Melbourne, which it you will. actually find at 44 on the dial. That's so right. So let's have a look at what the show actually looks like. All right. Welcome to BTS with Jess, a behind-the-scenes arts show inspiring young people around South Australia to get creative. If you're ready to paint a mural, join a band learn to dance or take the stage with a theatre group then join me Jessica McCall on Channel 44 Adelaide and CTV Plus. That's fantastic. Thank you Malcolm. So much Thank to you. see. Thank you. So is it aimed at children or is it aimed at adults the, the program? Or Somewhere is it in between. The family <laughs> So well I mean i love for as many families as possible to enjoy my show as well but ideally it is aimed at I would say you'd call them teenagers youth tweens. anyone tweens yeah tweens. tweens are tweens are included but anyone between about 13 to 16 would be okay. like the ideal target audience because I right. feel like they're the people at least when I was that age anyway the people who are really trying to find their feet in the world trying to find their place in the world yeah but and, you know yeah. you sort of know that I think you're starting to realize those things about what you actually like or don't like around That's eight right. or nine. Yeah. So we need to see, you know, people, uh, well, an eight year old needs to see a teenager doing something they want to do. So it's sort mm. of a, it's a progression, I think. That's right. Like yeah. climbing a ladder. You've sort of got to climb by looking at who's doing it already. Otherwise That's you wouldn't right. know what it is you're trying to find. Exactly. And then I guess it relates to what I was saying earlier about how I was inspired by somebody else who was making a show to make my own show. So if people who are watching these episodes can see someone their age or a little bit older mm. already working on a creative project, then that person watching it is more likely to go, oh, wow, that's incredible. I can do that I too. I can do that. Yeah. You always need a little bit of help along the way. You can, you know, the, the old saying in, in the theatre business is people who say it's a one-man show mm. have forgotten the bloke who turns on the lights or opens the curtain or takes the tickets at the door or cleans the theatre afterwards and all of those things. So everything we do in life is really a collaborative effort when you think about it. It is, exactly. So what's the plan for Jess in the future? Good question. Um, so... At the moment, obviously, I'm loving working on my show and I'm hoping for that to go further um, in the future. But ideally, um, my ideal profession would be TV presenter or TV host, um, working on shows on mainstream television that would, you know, make, make a good, make a living out of it yeah. um, and on things that I'm well, passionate it's a about. Profession. Yeah, exactly. And uh, one of, what we, we talked about before about being honest and real, I think one of the best pieces of advice I could give anybody who is starting is always be honest. When people pretend on television, you can pick you can pick they're not being honest right from the beginning. Yeah. If they're too perfect, That's you know, right. if they don't blink or if they don't <laughs> scratch right. their face or yeah. fix their hair or something, it's too perfect. Yes. And we need to see a reflection of who we are. Yes, that's right. Yeah, definitely. I've been lucky enough to interview people from so many different communities. And when people are really honest about the way they feel, it just opens the door to everybody understanding things so much better. So yeah. what did you get from the kids that you feel will help the viewing audience engage with what they were doing? For example, the mural. Because, you know, we're discouraged to paint on the walls. <laughs> yeah. But... How, how did they make that happen? Was it a school teacher made it happen for them? Was it a community or a council that they approached? How did they get to do that? So it was actually a student who started the whole idea and started the ball rolling. Another year? Um, oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> and then they collaborated with other students in their school, um, took the idea to an art teacher and I think another teacher in the school or another staff member as well. And then they collaborated with Create for Adelaide, which is an initiative um, run for the Adelaide Festival this year. And um, through that, they were able to work with local artist Lucinda Penn, who paints right. lots of murals around Adelaide. So they had sort of a guiding angel, so to speak. Eventually they did. They kind of built up different people along the way to, to help them achieve the project and then that brought what in. What would be the paint? Where, how did they get the paint? How did they prime the wall? Yes, uh, exactly. Where did the design come from? How did they take it from perhaps a page or a screen to the wall? There's all of those things That's to consider. That's right, yes. The same with uh, the music, uh, the musicians in the music episode. How did people join that band? How did young people join the band? So that is actually a band that's run by the Town of Gawler Council or right. supported by the Town of Gawler Council um, and their youth space. So they have what's called a youth space, which is um, right. an initiative for youth that it runs all different types of programs and social groups and that sort of thing for young, young people. And the band is just one of those programs that they run. Right. Oh, great. And anyone can join who is, I think, under 25, between 12 and 25. I the thing is, though, how do you find out that that exists? Good question. And, well, they'll find out through your program. Hopefully. That's the point. No, but that's why these things, why yeah. these sort of programs are so relevant. Because we've lost local voices with, mm. you know, TV becoming such a worldwide thing. And mm. with Netflix, they don't do programs like this. That's right. This is why community television is so valuable to mm. our community, because... If you're watching all the different programs uh, community television have, from uh, car racing to fishing That's right. and chat shows like this, it gives people a real understanding of you know, how, mm. how things are happening. Exactly. So your education that you're going through at the moment, when do you, when do you is it graduate? Is that the right word? Yeah, yeah. So I, I would graduate this degree next, early next year or finish right. at the end of this year, but I'm not sure if I want to continue with further study. So um, that's something I'm considering, but well, I'm not sure yet. I'm work. on the fence. It's getting that's out right. to actually practice what you've learned, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. The fact you've gone this far with getting to this point, you're really doing it already. Thank you. No, but you are. Thank you. I mean, that's yeah. the whole point. And actually pulling together something on a shoestring budget is never easy. Yeah, that's right. Was yeah. that hard for you? In a way, yes. Um, but what was the hardest part? Was it finding the crew or conning your friends? Or <laughs> what was the so, hardest part? Um, that wasn't actually too difficult. So the uni was incredible with um, helping to supply people to do camera work and right. film. So they're all students who helped me out with um, camera work. and that So was... really what you're saying is if you have a passion for this, find the university course that can help you. Because as mm. we said before, your contemporaries can be your workmates and family that you build That's right. for the rest of your life, really. Exactly. All yeah. right, look, we've got to take another short break. And I'm sure there's some important things about a university in this one. We'll be back in a tick. Jess McCall is our special guest, well, has been our special guest on this episode. We're talking about BTS, which means... Behind the scenes. Thank you so much again, Malcolm, for having me. Of arts... That's right. So it's a behind the scenes arts show. So a documentary talking about all the different ways that art is made um, and encouraging young people to get involved. Right. And aimed at a family market. Yeah. On community TV That's coming right. up real soon. Just check your local guides. Episode, uh, now you've made four. What about episode five, six, seven and eight? Oh, well, I've got some ideas. Um, I can't say too much yet because um, it's not out in the out in the public eye. But um, right. I've got some ideas, um, and I'll be sure to keep you posted. Keep me posted. Come back and tell us when you make some more. That would be lovely. Sure will. Jess, it's absolutely a pleasure to talk with you, and I really sincerely wish you the best for the future. You've got a good head for TV. Thank you. Great for radio too, but <laughs> terrific you. for TV. And the fact that you want to sort of go on and. I suppose uh, piggyback both sides of it, being a presenter and a producer, means that you'll have a career for sure. Thank you. So just remember that name, everyone. It's Jess McCall, 
and she is a producer and host of a brand new TV show on Community TV, both here in Adelaide and in Melbourne, called BT, uh, BTS, Behind the Scenes. So it's time for us to say goodbye. Jess, thank you so much again. Until next time, keep yourself nice till we meet. Bye.